What's going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Robotax Report. And I'm about to break this down uh, for people who are new to this and coming in for the first time. So if you want to skip around, the chapters will be broken down in YouTube so you can just go wherever you like to see what's going on. And on X, I'll have the timestamps linked in a comment too. So if you want to reference that, it's a little sloppier over there, but I think it'll get better. I know a lot of people have been waiting to see the report on 12.3.3, especially now going into 12.3.4, which I do have on my car. And, uh, well, I, I have it available on my car. It'll be getting downloaded today and installed. And I'll get maybe one or two more trips on 12.3.3 while I'm working and installing that update through the hotspot on my phone. If this is your first time seeing this, this is the data side of Cyberlift. It's something I've been doing for years. Some of you might be familiar with the community tracker created by Elias Martinez on X. And he's responsible for the beauty of this dashboard where we were able to put all of my data and it's all integrated directly into the community tracker too. So my data separate here isn't excluded, but it is contributing just to be clear on that. And just like with the community tracker, you can actually go to the link for this either through the tracker or through just fsdtracker.com forward slash cyberlift. Link is in the description below. If you guys want to check it out, poke around, look at this, ask me questions. You can use it as a resource because we've done a really good job, I think, of parsing out what the system can do and eliminating as much bias as possible, making this as much of an objective data collection project as we can over the years. Elias and I have been working together for years, uh, cross-checking each other, running things back and forth, making sure that we are catching slip-ups where they may occur, whether it's bias or misinterpreted data or something else has happened. Feedback from the audience has been a great help in making this more understandable, more intuitive. And without dragging on too long about that, I hope that all of you do find value in this and enjoy using it. And please go in, mess around and ask us questions. We love it. We're total data geeks and we'd like to be able to show what FSD can do. Now, you can find all of my reports on my YouTube channel and I've been posting them on X as well. I am trying to post on both platforms with all the content that I can. Uh, but yeah, you can go into the playlist and go from the very first episode and get a good laugh at how different it was and actually see how this has progressed over the years. But the whole point of this, since we don't get the actual numbers from Tesla themselves, which we would all love to have, this is our attempt at real world tangible data that you can actually look at and model out predictions for the future and to see how it's performed historically. And I've, I've really enjoyed putting this together and I'll continue to do so going forward. Now, just to be very clear again, what you're seeing from me here, this is my RoboTaxi report. This is CyberLip. So this is all of my driving, my actual RoboTaxi trips with customers, my classifications for disengagements, and all the metrics measuring disengagements over time, performance from build to build, all of it. So keep in mind, this, what you're looking at is from me. The community tracker has a wider breadth of everything else. This dashboard is just going to focus on my sort of science experiment with proving out Robotaxi as a proof of concept and modeling out how close we're getting to that with all these metrics. Now, I haven't actually put these numbers on a report in a while, so I think this might be valuable too. I am approaching 257,000 kilometers on my car, my odometer, or about 160,000 miles, and I've completed over 10,000 rideshare trips. Of those 10,000 rideshare trips, about 1,500 of them I've done and graded at the RoboTaxi level. Now, you'll notice on here you're seeing 1474. Well, that's because we haven't included 1233 yet, which we'll get to in a second. And this trip success is the overall success from start to finish of recording RoboTaxi trips. So I'm looking forward to this number, though it's low here, it's cumulative over everything. Watching that increase because version 12 pulling the weights upward will be pretty cool to see. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. You know, here we're looking at the RoboTaxi results. Now to be crystal clear about RoboTaxi trips, this isn't me just measuring every trip I drive in the car all over the place. These are actual trips with paying customers where I am safely supervising the system. And we're just looking at whether or not the car was able to do it. Did it get from pickup to drop off competently without me having to take over or intervene in some select cases where it'll get stuck at a flashing red, for example? or if it thinks there's a stoplight when there isn't and we're just sitting there, if I have to get involved, it's a fail. And it may seem harsh, but it is what it is. It's important that it is harsh because you want this to be a system that people are willing to come back to, to keep paying to use. You wouldn't want to take one trip and have an incompetent or super uncomfortable experience, put it on Yelp and go your separate ways. You know, we want this to be a good system, one that people are going to want to use and recommend to friends and family. And that is the kind of mindset I have measuring it. I'm measuring its skill against my own too. So you could even think of it as a five-star standard or an upper tier standard. But that means that for it to be doing in the 90s and 80s and better at that level, it's already superior to most Uber and Lyft drivers. And I think that's actually the case. Now, a few of you probably saw the poll that I put out to kind of predict where 12.3.3 would land, given where 12.3 landed here. So let's not waste any more time and get into that. We'll add 12.3.3 to it. And I... 
I can't stress how important this is. Now, I know some of you might be disappointed. I only see it at 90%. However, big shout out to the majority of people that actually predicted it would be between 90 and 95%. It almost didn't make it. We were hovering around 88, 89 for a while, but the, you know, it did really good for the last couple of trips, bringing it up to 90% before getting my new update. Now, there's a chance in the two or three trips that I do between installing 12.3.4 that maybe it comes down, maybe it goes up more, but this is where we're at currently at 50 trips, 90% from previously 88%. And yes, I will be dropping a poll after this RoboTaxi report for everybody to put in their predictions as to how 1234 is going to perform compared to these. Now, what I really want to highlight here is this is the first time, uh, this, is, this is incredible, to have two builds back-to-back -back consistently performing this high. I once was teased by 1142 at 93% thinking, oh my gosh, are we, are we getting there? Is this happening? And then, yeah, <laughs> 1144 came out and broke my heart. And most of the builds in between were all around that same 50% threshold. But version 12 came out swinging and is still holding up high. And this is a really big deal because this might be that inflection point where we stop seeing this crazy peaks and valleys stuff with the results, reliability, percentage of trips completed. And we're actually going to start seeing it go up in a more consistent line. And we want to get as close as we can to eventually that 99.9999%. Now, I think we're really at a point here where we've taken off the training wheels and it's going to get increasingly difficult for this number to climb, but to climb, I think it will. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what 1234 is going to do. We didn't get as many trips as I'd like, only 50. That's more so in part because the, the update came out pretty quick, which is awesome. So I'm not going to complain about that, but I do, you know, being the, the science and data geek I am, I'd like to have a larger sample size. Uh, but I mean, this is pretty good. I was pretty happy with 56 trips on 1142 doing what it did. So being around 50 at 90%, you pretty much know early on you know, where the system's going to land, it's not really going to have a massive, like, percent jump from day to day in its success. It's pretty consistent as a system. So I'm pretty confident that, you know, 90% about, you know, plus or minus maybe 2 or 3% is where this would land, even as this scales up to 88 trips, 150 trips, 200 trips. So it's okay. We're going to move on. I'm not going to linger on 1233 uh, in my own car too to get more data. I'm just going to go ahead and update and we're going to roll with that as soon as we can and add to these RoboTaxi results. But I hope you guys enjoy seeing as much as I do the consistent high level performance, 88 to 90. And I'm really looking for 1234 to push that bar higher. I'm hoping, I'm still predicting it's going to be between 90 and 95% myself. I hope I'm wrong, but we'll see. I'm going to put out that poll and we'll see how everybody does guessing where 1234 lands. I have been told that it seems to be a bit more like 12.3, which I'm actually excited about because I liked 12.3's execution a bit better. So if it's got some improvements, but some behaviors of 12.3 versus 3.3, I'm, I'm excited to try that. All right, now this heat map is gonna go through a bit of a change. So keep in mind right now, 75% to 100% is getting that nice blue color. 51% to 74% is getting the yellow, and then 0 to 50 getting the red. And again, that correlates to the percentage of success on those actual customer trips. Again, this is actually mapping out the regions where as a robo-taxi, it does well or not so well or maybe struggling. I'll just show you. We'll go into 1144. Um, and just to show you the different look of this, we had a couple of areas that were okay. And you're seeing over here just how many trips are in the area, how many kilometers until a disengagement, like how far do we make it before we actually had to disengage and the number of trips and the success rate for the trips, like Mission Hills, University Heights was really struggling at 31%, you know, with 13 trips. And they, you can also, again, if you're on this dashboard, clicking around these different builds, you can look at them individually. You can control and select them to get a wider berth of everywhere they've been. This is actually back when we were doing the uh, Crooks Corner stuff, the Ross Gerber Dan uh, intersection. And this is just meant to show you, you know, regional difficulty. Like how well can the RoboTaxi perform in these regions? What's really dope is when we actually get into version 12, taking everything else out, there's only a couple of regions on 12.3 that were really struggling. And it was a, a single trip encounter, three trips in Balboa. That Balboa South Park area is pretty tough next to downtown San Diego. Anybody who's from here can probably corroborate that. Um, but in other regions, maybe only had one trip. So if that one trip was a fail, of course, that's going to be a 0%. Being one guy, this is some of the issue I might run into and why I would like to have a larger sample size to revisit these areas and to do more trips in those areas to get more data versus just what you could say that trip might have been a one-off. It just, it ran into some weird scenario, construction, potholes, whatever disengagement it might have been. 
and we'll get into the causation after this. But this is meant to show you sort of like where the Robotaxi might really perform well. And if we go into 12.33, it's gotten even better. And again, 50 trips, and I was sort of isolated. See, we're next to Escondido where it was having a hard time on 12.3. You see, I can put both on here to show more widespread. But look at all that blue. And I want to get back to the blue thing because that's something we're going to be changing soon. Because I think 75% to 100 is a little too nice, a little, a little too easy for it. But again, going back to 12.3, uh, this, this looks good. And even over here, 100%, 88% over 8 trips, 100% over 7 trips, 75% over 8 trips. Even in the lower end, it was just, well, okay, it was Riverside, 2 trips. So potentially a one-off. Um, I would like to go back up more into Riverside, Anaheim area and do more rides out there too. Uh, but you know, we did have a couple of disengagements there, which was unfortunate. I definitely want to fill out a lot more of the map going into uh, 12, 3, 4 and beyond. We might have to find a way. We'll probably just, I'll end up doing something more cumulative, showing just several builds coming together in the regions and it should count on multiples. So if I start going through 12, 3, 4 in Escondido, then those trips will add in if I have them all selected and we'll see more of a overall picture of how it's doing. Now on that topic though, so I am going to be changing uh, Elias and I have talked about a way to represent this in a bit more realistic manner for what's acceptable. So the, you know, 100% success trips will have its own color identifier altogether. And then we'll have from say 90 to 99% as blue and maybe um, 80 to 89% as yellow and everything below 80% as red. Because when you're getting into the idea of a robo taxi, you, you, the hundred percent success is what you want upper 90s 99 98 maybe at the lowest so getting too friendly with the colors doesn't make sense as it gets this good so this is a good thing don't look at it as trying to make fsd look bad this is actually raising the standard because it is getting so much better that we want to see how it measures up with those higher expectations all right as we look at the disengagements by causation this was uh, always a fan favorite on the channel like the causation donut meant to show the breakdown of what disengagements are happening and what percentage of them are of total disengagements are these types and this all correlates on this data dashboard so your disengagements over time the the trips and everything you know these are the recorded disengagements that have led to those results and what this does is break down what they are so like in red here this is maps this is anytime it has an issue with background map data or might not be seeing the proper turn or also uh, navigational map issues where the route is just not correct to what the car is doing and you know it might that was an example of the riverside issue where it wasn't looking at the clear exit we needed to take to get to the 215 i believe and it just wanted to route us around like crazy on the 15 on some wild goose chase to eventually get where we wanted to go and it just wasn't an acceptable amount of time or shift it was completely unnecessary therefore a failure condition for me now that might be different from other testers which is totally fine i am grading on a much higher scale or a much higher uh, standard that needs to be achieved. So I will be disengaging and considering it a failure when others may not because they'll just let it reroute or go where they want. I'm pretty sure it, it shouldn't be so hard to intuit what I'm saying by this. But if you do need more clarification, just let me know in the comments on, on YouTube or X and I'll try to explain as best I can. I'm sure that other viewers can as well that I've seen this for a while. We go through this donut, we'll continue around here clockwise. We had skill issue, which is kind of my catch-all, sort of. Uh, this is any time where you know the system can do what it needs to do and it's just flopping it. Um, or I can also consider this the moments where, you know, it would get way too close to a curb or even like, you know, you feel the tire kind of touch it a little bit. And that's just, I don't want to make, I don't consider that a critical disengagement because, I mean, depending on the curb, it, I think that's situational because there are some people that have posted their tires being blown out and that's not good. That's a critical failure in my, in my opinion, both on the car and the driver, in my opinion there, because you should have been able to intervene if you were paying attention and looking at the curb. I have seen plenty of curbs that have had me worried in the past where I'm just like, that's kind of jutting out pretty far and I'm just ready because I'm expecting the car to cut it in and do something wrong. And usually it doesn't. I, I haven't had an actual curb hit which is great. I know I've had at least three that would have been if I didn't take over. And that was on 12.33 too. So, and I'm hoping 12.34 does better with that. It's been fine recently. It's been okay. And for anybody who does ask in the comments, yes, I did recalibrate my cameras. But more importantly than that, recalibrating your cameras is not a meaningful thing to do unless you had to change your windshield or had work done on the actual cameras. It's a placebo that somehow got around in the community that, oh, if your car is acting a little weird, just recalibrate your cameras. It doesn't do anything, guys. Just, it doesn't you can stop recommending that you know it's thank you for the feedback 
you know, your heart's in the right place, but just me taking this point to correct some, some bad information and just recalibrating the cameras is a negligible thing that will not meaningfully impact the FSD's performance if you're thinking it's acting a little sloppily. I don't know if anyone from Tesla wants to correct me on that, they can. I've, I've had plenty of conversations with people um, around the camera calibration, including from Tesla, and like, no, <laughs> that doesn't do anything. Um, it's specifically there to calibrate the system if the system has been messed with cameras have been swapped or their windshield's been replaced actual work on the hardware but that aside the system's been performing the same as it did before i calibrated as expected uh, but it's doing okay you know it's it's not been the worst thing ever i've had a couple of close calls i sort of also consider that maybe some teething if it happens initially and then kind of works itself out but in this case it's just getting closer than i would like in most cases and a lot of those cases too i understand the machine perception could be better but I'm just not going to take that chance because I'm not going to be that guy that causes a slowdown in the rollout because I thought, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. No, it's it's not worth it. Now, next on our list here, we have staging, which I'm happy has been greatly reduced. Um, I think I had one staging concern on 12.3, and this has more to do with planning ahead, staging the route, staging for the next maneuver. Uh, this was a big issue with lane selection on uh, versions 10 and 11 for a long time because you would have, say, a right turn coming up and you're less than 100 meters away. Um, you're really close, a few hundred yards away. And the car decides to get into the left lane to go around a car or just get in the left lane for whatever reason. And now you can't get back to the right lane in enough time to execute maneuver. That is a just an executional fail that I just eventually put into staging because it needs and knows the route. Plan ahead, get into the proper lane, commit to that route, don't change unnecessarily, don't prioritize speed based lane changing, just focus on accuracy, route competency. Again, thinking in the vein of a robo taxi, people aren't going to be as concerned with getting around slow moving traffic in a future where things are autonomous. So, you know, you have to think about that too. You have to extrapolate your experience to a bit of a thought experiment about, you know, how a self driving ecosystem would operate and where the importance lies. Would be prioritizing safety, of course. Um, recognition of pedestrians and cyclists the things external to the vehicle even though the vehicle is really good the person in the vehicle is safe even in an impact you know external factors are important and then just competency making sure that the route is accurate no unnecessary maneuvers or excessive travel just getting to the point and hopefully uh, you know 1234 just doesn't have any staging at all the the causation will pop up as it comes along just to show you an example if we click several of these you'll see a lot more breakdowns here from discomfort to false positives, human legal maps, obstacles, roundabout specifically, because that was a really big concern for a while, or just it just was not doing well with them. So as we look back at 12.3.3 here, there's a, an important thing I, I do want to highlight when it comes to disengagements, that being the difference between critical and non-critical. And for me, a critical disengagement, and Elias and I agree on this, it is something, it's actually critical. Like you're intervening to prevent potential damage to persons or property, or it's an actual critical system fault, like the red wheel forced disengagement, or to add to that in its own specific category of importance, legal critical disengagements because it's breaking the law. So damaging persons or property, critical system failure that results in you having to take over and legal concerns. Those are critical disengagements. Everything else I consider non-critical. They're inconvenient or, you know, they're preventative of a system doing the job, but they're not a safety or a critical concern. It can be like excessive jerking in the wheel that causes like massive discomfort. Like that would be quite simply a discomfort disengagement, which is also pretty rare. I think we've only had one. Yeah, we had one. And it was one of those scenarios where you probably have seen where the car will get dancy when trying to pick a lane. But this time getting really close to actually needing to commit to that lane change because we have other cars around us and it's still kind of deciding to like not sure what lane it's going to pick. And I could categorize that under maybe skill issue or something else. But with a customer there and just the really uncomfortable situation, I qualify it as discomfort because that is a feeling of uncomfortable incompetence that myself too as a passenger would be like, I don't know if I want to ride with this service again. It didn't really seem all that great at doing what it needs to do. But again, compared to previous builds, very rare. Just one of the disengagements. Now, system limitations, now these are the customer trips too, where unfortunately we had to go through like a flashing red light and yeah, it, it is what it is. It's not trained on it. It won't proceed forward. I have to intervene. It is a system limitation. And when that's gone, that category will get reduced even more and even more successes. And it's still with all these things going on, including the only critical disengagements I had, the three system errors, red wheels, what I've nicknamed as solar flares because it's when you're having that overload of solar photons hitting the camera 
and for for hardware three cars, I think mostly um, during certain points of sunrise and sunset, you have a really high chance of the system saying, nope, can't do it, take over, and you get the red wheel, and you have to drive. Uh, that has happened to me three times, and it, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, I don't think it's much of a concern with hardware four cars. I, I think that you know going forward, it won't really be an issue. I think it might be more local to me, but it is some of the customer failures here, which just kind of limits what I'm expecting to be success between like 6.30 in the morning and 7.30 in the morning-ish. Um, and then, you know, sunset as well, which I'm spacing on the numbers right now, but that's easy to look up. Last one I hadn't mentioned was human disengagement, and that's caused, uh, like, the scenario on the gauntlet where the, the Mustang came forward and we had to stop again, or if uh, I've, I've had some issues with uh, buses, you know, preventing us from being able to go where we need to go because they're going to decide to get in front of me or try to cut in front, and I take over to push back because of what another human is doing. This can also be the case if, um, you know, pedestrians or cyclists do anything kind of unexpected like they decide uh well I, I guess one example is you know some of the homeless downtown might you know just decide to jump across the street and the system will likely react and hit the brakes pretty hard but i just instinctively will like take over to prevent anything from potentially happening um and that's usually if it's a safety concern i put that in its own safety category usually it isn't it's just me reacting because somebody had like jumped out and then went back to the street or a cyclist wasn't paying attention and like went to come over to me and then turned away a like, little weird awkward scenarios with other humans that's what that is and mostly it's not an issue uh there's only been one on this build but overall version 12 is doing a really good job of navigating around all the craziness that comes with human beings and that's been one of the things that's been mostly impressive to the customers that have ridden with me and some of the customer reactions you've seen us talk about how it's able to handle driving around all these crazy primates behind the wheel with all the issues that come with it now, the last little thing we'll touch on real quick before we ramp up is just the disengagements across builds. Uh, we got up pretty high be between critical disengagements on 12.3. Now, it's not that there was a disengagement there. It's just that we updated, and now we're on 12.3.3, and the three red wheel system failures have caused the, uh, the critical disengagement success to drop quite a bit, which is unfortunate, but it comes with the territory. Now, we're working on a way, uh, we've been brainstorming a way to accurately represent the the true, like, the distance to critical disengagements and, and mileage is covered, because every time we update, it's sort of a reset from zero that all have to go back up. So it might make it seem like it's actually doing worse than it may be doing, especially because here on 12.3, we would have just continued to increase, and then we get our update. We're, we're working on a way to better visualize that for everybody, and we will see how 12.3.4 does. But these are all just different ways that you can look at disengagements across build. Now, some of these things have my own personal trips baked in, like going between customers or just times that I'm using the system on my own. Disengagements across builds is one of those things. So um, if you go back, we started tracking the critical disengagements that we can actually plot from 11.3.6. So if you go back further, you'll see uh, just kind of, I think, cumulative disengagements, like everything along the others. So... Our representation is arguably more accurate once we get to 11.3.6 and forward, because we essentially ported all this in from my pen and paper style, which is very accurate. I am very good at making sure I don't make mistakes, though I know I'm not perfect. I have a passion for stringent science and objectivity and making sure that everything is as good as possible. But that is to say, it's so like this is showing you just kind of everything trips with paying customers as well as myself. Causation Donut 2 is showing all disengagements that I've done on each of these builds. Um, you know, some with the customers and some just on my own. And then the heat map, this is RoboTaxi specific. And it says RoboTaxi trip success percent by location showing where it is. So RoboTaxi results and the map are specific to RoboTaxi graded stuff. The 1500 or so, which I can show you here now that we're looking at everything, 1541, 50% overall success. And you're seeing some of these little one-off outliers here. Don't get too excited about that 100%. That was only two trips on 11.472, some of the intermediate builds, and that was not a whole lot of time on. So that's what this filter is down here, greater than 500 kilometers. You can click that to get rid of the more noisy stuff that wasn't as impactful and just show all the bigger things. But yeah, I mean, if we cut that out, we add in you know all the total trips of everything I've done. Oh, wait, I hit the wrong button. That's to take it all off. There we go. So yeah, I've done over 1,500 total trips and cumulative success.
from 49 to 50%. Let's see if we can bring it up even higher than that. Now this report was admittedly a bit longer than the last one, trying to get a little bit more into the details for everybody to explain what's going on. Let me know what you thought. Give me all the feedback and comments down below. Now, if you have FSD and you'd like to get involved and get your data added in to the FSD community tracker, hit up Elias on X about getting onto the community dashboard and actually being able to put in your information. We like to get it from everywhere we can. Popping onto the main dashboard just to show you what you're looking at when you get in there, you'll see that there is a lot more information to get into in all the categories you can imagine. 170 testers, and this is a map just showing where all the testers are putting their information in, which that is exciting to see a majority of the U.S. and large swaths of Canada contributing to this data. And the more you drive, the more you put in, the better, because the more information we can get, the better understanding we have for how the system is doing across the board, quite literally from builds as early as 10.10.2 all the way to 12.33, and now going into 12.34, which we'll see on here real soon. So thank you so much for your time and nerding out with me, and I will catch you guys in the next report. Take care.